Okay, so what is the Spear V file format? Well, it might help to look at a, uh, just take a simple look at compilation in general. Let's say we have some C code. These C instructions can be written out, fine. But then under the hood, when we go and compile them, they are broken out into a s steps of intermediate assembly language instructions. And there kind of is a one-to-one -one mapping here. It's easy enough to generate these. And then from each of these instructions, the underlying zeros and ones, these are actually aliases for these zeros and ones. It's not quite that simple though, because I don't know why I said that, it's not really relevant. But what I'm getting at is that in OpenGL, um, all of this is sort of handled by the sort of handled by the graphics driver or the you know the API. The the code. It's it's handled. Actually, no, it's not handled by the API. It's handled by the driver. So the driver makes a bunch of optimizations, a series of optimizations, and turns that into shader code. What's the problem with that? The problem is that different graphics vendors have different conventions for how the GLSL instructions are broken down into intermediate steps, as well as how those steps work. So to get around that, Vulkan sort of takes this much, this part out of our hands and says, okay, we'll take the GLSL code, compile it to this intermediate Spear V code, and then that will be handled by Vulkan. This means that when there are errors, those errors are sort of compile errors or, you know, yeah, compile errors rather than runtime errors because compile errors are a little easier to catch. Also, if you make the best Assassin's Creed in the world, then graphics card vendors will sort of look into your code and say, how did you do this? And they'll optimize their own graphics cards according to your code, even if you're not using best practices, which is one reason why it's important to have sort of an intermediate byte code language um, to standardize everything. If we look over at Kronos Group's page, they have this example. Uh, yeah, we take some GLSL code and then that is compiled into the Spear V format and yeah, it looks very similar to assembly language. We define in very low level um, the different symbols, the different variables, all of this, the functions which we're going to use. Thankfully, we don't need to we don't need to compile this stuff by hand. There are tools which we can use, which we'll be using in this video. All right, so let's dig into it and write our first shader. We'll make a folder for them. And we'll start with the vertex shader. So there we have it. Um, we're just going to focus on one thing at a time. Loading data into the shader is one thing, entirely different. So for now, we're just going to have positions and colors hard-coded. 
The goal will be to draw a triangle. We won't see it in this video, but um, we've got our positions. Here we have x0, so in the center. Hopefully you're familiar with the OpenGL coordinate system. Vulcan's coordinate system is pretty similar. Um, the way Vulcan's coordinate system works, I might as well talk about it, is uh, negative y will be up, positive y will be down. This is a reverse of um, OpenGL, and one of the reasons for this is if we take the right-hand rule and we go um, left to right and then up to down and curl our fingers that way, then our thumb will point into the screen, and it makes sense that depth should be pointing into the screen, and that's why sort of being reversed. Anyway, then we have colors, red, green, blue, and these colors, anyway, it all defines a triangle. And when we go to draw, we use the um, inbuilt variable vertex index, which is incremented for each vertex automatically. And this is just a quick way of getting those three positions and colors onto the screen. So anyway, that's our vertex shader. Let's pop over to our fragment shader. Okay, so we just stick an alpha of one onto the color and send it out. Okay, so this is all well and good. We've got our code, and now we need to compile it. So if we pop over to our Vulkan SDK, we have here the binaries folder, and inside the binaries folder, we have GLSLC, GL Shader Language Compiler. Um, this is the program which we will be running. Now, there are ways to do it in code, but I like to keep the compilation separate to the code. I don't like to compile and runtime. Um, yeah, I just like to have everything checked before. So, anyway, where was I? Um, now we'll add a new file uh, called, what do we want to do? Compile shaders, and it'll be a command line file. We can set that up. So we'll grab that shader, lo uh, that location there. We want to call GLSL compiler. And the first thing we're going to have is our uh, code. That's the next argument. And then uh, we're going to output it. And the output is going to be called uh, vert dot spv okay we'll do the same thing for our fragment shader okay <clears throat> now let's give that a shot okay so here we are open up the shaders and it complains file not recognized, file format not recognized. So um, in standard GLSL, we can just get away with dot text. We can even get away with just writing strings and reading that, but um, that's not gonna fly here for the compiler. So what we'll do is I'm gonna rename these files to shader.vert. It's dot vert and dot frag is basically what we need to compile them. Okay, so we've got that, and I'll rename. Okay, cool. So then we'll pop back, we'll run that again. And it has compiled them. We have our spear v files here, which we could then read. Now these spear v files are binary files. Okay, so if I open this up, Google include, that's a little spooky, but anyway. So uh, they're binary files, so a lot of these characters are simply unprintable. Side note, when I first wanted to get into programming, when I was a kid, 
I would try to copy paste this stuff into, um, I'd, I'd open this stuff in text files and try to edit it. Ooh, let's change this number, see what happens. Um, turns out that doesn't work. Anyway, so um, I'm not going to do a lot much, a lot more, but we can um, just make a new file to start things off. And this is going to be very, very simple right now. Um, okay, so what we do to read this file is we just open a given file name and we put in the option read binary. Open it in read mode. Uh, reading a binary file, not a text file. Then we just go file, read, and that just reads all the contents of the file and deposits it into code. And then we can return that. And that can be used in some other um, things. Anyway, so yeah, pretty short in the end there. But uh, yeah, so that was the section. So yeah, today we had a look at the Spear V file format. We had a look at writing our first shaders. Very, very simple, but important. And then compiling them into Spear V and how we could read those Spear V files. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. And yeah, that'll be it. Bye. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, please don't forget to subscribe and like. If you dislike the video, press the dislike button twice, then click the like button three times. I believe in you. You can do it. Come on, get into game development.